say it to me. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Ready? Go for it. Okay. Hi, my name is Dante Gonzalez. I'm a theater student at CC, and I probably paid about $400. $500 on textbooks. $350. $350. And I spent this semester about $300 on textbooks. $1,100 to be exact for the both of us. $600 to $800? $1,200. I've spent about $200. I should be spending a little more, but I can't because I don't have the funds for that. In the American job market, higher education is a necessity. I'm an early childhood education major and I spent around $500 on my textbooks. However, astronomical rises in textbook costs are hindering students in their pursuit of success. And my average cost per semester uh, for textbooks is around $350. Some educators and advocates are finding a solution in open educational resources. I'm Daniel Giles. I'm teaching a pre-calculus course this semester. I have 25 students in that course that are using a free PDF of pre-calculus, downloadable. And I have 60 students in my calculus sections. Uh, collectively, they spent $13,000 on the textbook this semester. The textbook pricing situation is not great right now. Um, students who are already a poor group in general are being gouged by publishers and for a lot of money for textbooks that are clearly not worth that price. I think obviously the blame lies with big publishers and it's whoever pushes the online components because that's the biggest reason why you can't resell. So, yeah. On average, we're talking just for your normal textbook, anywhere from like 100 bucks to like 180 bucks. Since the 1980s, we've seen a dramatic consolidation in the textbook publishing market. This consolidation can be correlated with equally dramatic rises in textbook costs. Records from the Bureau of Labor Statistics taken from the years 1981 to 2018 show an approximate 900% increase in the price of textbooks. This reflects an increase three times the national rate of inflation. A textbook is $100, and we say, oh, is that too much? It's just $100 for a semester. But if we have 30 students, that's $3,000 each semester for a class. And so three or four classes, this is upwards of $10,000 a semester that I'm charging students to learn. If I had the opportunity to say, hey, let's take $10,000 and support our students in other ways. If I could take a student who can't do the, put in the time necessary at home because they're working a full-time job and say, hey, I've got $10,000 a semester to support you, that would be worth it. For one student, if I can take the cost out of the entire class. And we have students skipping meals and sleeping in their cars. I would love for the money that's being spent on textbooks to be helping them just sleep somewhere safe, you know. As textbook prices rise, students are forced to use unconventional methods to purchase their learning materials. Here at City College or anywhere else that you buy it new, it's definitely like not affordable, so you have to go online to find them, used ones, even Craigslist sometimes people look at. Yeah, I get used or I rent. <laughs> new books are like out of question. I have three science classes, and uh, each textbook is about a hundred, two hundred dollars, and that can be really expensive for me at least. And I need to pay for my apartment, and I need to work at the same time. I got a job right, right when I started school because I knew how expensive textbooks and stuff would be. I work like forty hours a week uh, during summer. I was working that so I could like afford school and like housing. It's still that, you know, that dividend in that bank account. It's still gonna cost you a bunch of money. All my friends are paying for these books out of pocket and it's insane. Like, that's literally a whole paycheck right there. I know people that have like not taken certain courses and have taken less units in a semester because it's just way too much the cost altogether. Uh, my, my family helps me pay for some part of it. I don't think I've sold nothing for it, but I've definitely had to call and ask my mom for more money, which already feels really bad for asking her for money on top of like groceries and stuff. You're thinking about how much college is already, and so, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a struggle. My teacher just kind of reformats the whole textbook instead of making the students buy them. She just kind of makes slides um, out of all the different chapters that we need so we don't actually have to buy the textbooks ourselves. It's just accessible through Canvas. I've had professors who haven't required textbooks and they all the materials like online or through Canvas. My professors assign the textbooks and I can find all of them free online. So they are aware of the issue and they help us as much as they can for sure. I want to help my students, you know, and if a student says I can't buy the textbook, I'll, they're still my student, you know, I'll do everything I can to help them. We're trying to offer the public a promise of a good education. And we can't do that if we're trying to balance that education on the backs of, of students and their wallets. So that when I follow a textbook, I can take this approach to say, here's the textbook, so my job is to teach you the material from the textbook. And I did that when I first started, and then I thought, no, the material is what we're going to try to learn, and the be best way to learn that material might not be from the exercises in the textbook. I can think of exercises that are not in the textbook to deepen our understanding of some content, and so I'll just make them myself. I've, I've switched to online homework, and I'm actually using an open educational resource online homework now, which is a free website. So it's entirely free to sign up, and if you want to, as an instructor, set up your homework, you can go access other instructors' homework and pull problems from them, or write your own. And so you don't need the book for the homework problems. By collaborating on the creation and upkeep of OER, instructors, faculty, and scholars are engaging in peer review. This also promotes a more diverse, democratic process for the production of learning materials. It, I think it undergoes less editing process, right? It's a work in progress. And so I'm continually finding those and thinking, oh, how can I change it? But then I say, you know what, if I'm using this, I do feel it's my responsibility to contribute. So I shouldn't just say, hey, there's problems with this free textbook. It's a textbook written by math professors, and I can get involved with the writing of that and help change that. There are all ears about taking contributions from instructors across the country. We have to not only readdress what students are learning in the textbook, but we also have to bring learning from all sorts of sources and bring them into the classroom. And that could come from me, that could come from these open educational resources, that could come from the students too. Um, it felt less onerous for them as an investment in the class that they didn't have to make choices between uh, between being able to pay their share of the rent or being able to choose, can I go out to lunch today? Um, or, or do I have to defer that because I had to pay for a textbook this week? Um, that was, that was the, the one obvious benefit that they saw there. The hardest part for me in going to these open educational resources was trying to let go of that textbook that I'd, hold, that I'd held on to for, for almost a decade. All of a sudden, this carefully constructed space that we've made for ourselves, finally deciding, I'm happy with how I teach, I'm happy with how I've addressed this textbook. You're almost married to it for a time that it's very difficult to let go of it. Um, for those that are thinking about, uh, about moving to OER, uh, it's, it's a, it was a slow drawdown process for me by which I started moving material a little bit at a time towards, towards this, uh, this free textbook that I've been using. You're going to have a shakedown period for, for at least a semester, but for the ones that really want to do this, they'll, they'll find out they'll make that adjustment very quickly. What I have found fortunately for my discipline was that the transition to this free textbook wasn't as massive a change as I thought that it was. So it gave me the freedom to be able to reconfigure my course in ways that I never anticipated and still deliver the same material that we used to, just in a way that is more personalized to me. I don't want to impress upon other instructors because it's a very complex issue. So I, I, I wouldn't fault anyone for choosing it, the conventional pricey textbook. I'm relatively new to this process and it's a long road, but I definitely think, I think there's value in it. There's value in it. <laughs>